Good evening, and welcome to the Gethsemane Baptist Church midweek live broadcast on this 20th day of May, and it's good to have you with us this evening. First of all, I want to apologize for some of the technical issues we had last week. I'm trying to use a little bit different uh, mechanism this week to see if it works better. Um, you're certainly welcome to give us any feedback that you might have. I hope that our live stream works a little bit better this week and isn't uh, jumpy or interrupted like it was last week. So uh, thank you for your patience as we navigate through the world of technology. Anyway, thank you for being with us tonight. This is Pastor Brian Haar from the Gethsemane Baptist Church, and it is always uh, our privilege to have you join us. Let's open up in a word of prayer tonight. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for the opportunity we have to meet together here over electronic media and have a time of Bible study and prayer. Lord, we thank you for the comfort of your word. I pray that you would bless us in this time together. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, um, I'm not exactly sure what will happen next week. Um, we're working at Gethsemane Baptist Church to reopen, just like most churches, and um, it is my hope that either next week or the week after that, we will be back in our building for the Wednesday night service as well. Uh, so uh, we'll keep you all informed, but for those that have joined us here on this medium uh, and in this way, again, thank you for doing so. Appreciate it greatly. Uh, before we begin tonight, I've asked uh, my wife, Jilly, to join us. Uh, those of you that joined us in the la last week, you know she had a lesson for the children, and uh, she a lot of the kids enjoyed that. Uh, tonight I've asked her to join us because I want her to tell a short little story that's going to illustrate what I want to talk about tonight. A story that I've heard her repeat, oh, I don't have any idea how many times. Uh, and, and as we've been married and I've heard her tell this story numerous times. Um, about a little thing called an ood. And this story comes from her early days of life. Um, in fact, she doesn't remember it. It's something that her parents told her about. And so I'm going to ask her, I'm going to get set up for her to share that with you. And then I'll move things back so that you can talk, so that I can talk to you. So Julie, see if we can get this over here to be looking at you. All right. Oh, there we go. There is the beauty. All right. Okay. Julie, tell us about this lovely little thing called an ood. Okay, well, my kids will like this story. So, all of us are afraid of something, right? Well, I was probably about two years old, although I don't know. I don't remember this story. I just know that we were living in our first trailer at the time, and we moved out of that trailer when I was three. So I know that it was before I was three. I also know that I was old enough that I was getting around, toddling, I guess uh, you could say. And so anyway, my sister and I shared a bedroom, and our we were in a trailer and it was only 10 foot wide so the bedroom was probably something like 8 foot by 10 foot or something like that it's very small and we shared that bedroom and um, my sister was two years older than me so of course she had collected things toys whatever and when I got to toddling around she didn't want me messing with her stuff so she decided to create a creepy creature that would keep me from going to our bedroom and getting into her stuff. 
And so the creepy creature that she created in her mind, she called the Ood. Now, to this day, we have no idea what an Ood is, but we know that it must have been a very creepy creature in her mind. And I don't know how she came up with that word, that title, or what she called it. But anyway, she would tell me that there was an Ood in our bedroom, and therefore, I should not go in there. But of course, the funniest thing about this whole story is the fact that she got me afraid of the Ood, so I wouldn't go in there, but she also became afraid of the Ood, and she wouldn't even go in our bedroom. So it kind of backfired on her. But anyway, that's the story of the Ood. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the Ood. get uh, repositioned here with all this electronic stuff and the Ood. So my question to you today is this. What scares you? Now we listen to the story about the Ood and we smile. A little toddler's imagination we can Im we can think about that and we all as adults understand that there wasn't anything to be afraid of but it certainly scared Julie and ended up scaring her sister um, there are a number of illustrations that could be used out of that but the main thing I wanted to focus on is the idea of being afraid of something and I want to talk to you today about our fears. Um, Brother Nichols goes to our church. Many of you know him. And he has uh, a website and a ministry that he calls Life Above Fear. And the whole purpose of that is to help people understand that they don't need to live in fear. We don't need to be afraid. Um, God has given us the spirit of peace, not of fear. And we as believers really have nothing that we should be afraid of. Paul talked about the fact that you know, we don't have to be afraid. God is taking care of us. So, with those thoughts in mind, turn to the book of Psalm, please. The book of Psalm. And I'm going to try to keep this shorter tonight. Actually, may amaze some of you about how short this is going to be tonight. Um, because uh, I, I want to get the point across, but I hope to keep everyone's interest long enough that you'll understand the point and then we'll move on and I, I certainly plan on continuing on these thoughts uh, as we move back to the church service and talk on Wednesday nights I'm going to talk from this chapter probably for a couple of weeks here as I've been studying it but take your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalm please the book of Psalms we're going to go we're going to look at Psalm chapter 27 Psalm chapter 27 says it's a psalm of David and beginning in verse 1 please follow along Psalm 27 beginning in verse 1 the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, 
he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek my, ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over under the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. As we think about the psalmist here, and all the things that David went through in his life. Early on in his life, Saul was after him. Saul was jealous of David's popularity. Saul hated David because he knew that uh, or that David was going to be taking his place, and Saul didn't like that. David had many times in his life, sometimes brought on by his own sin, and other times brought on by Saul and other enemies that he had, but he had many times of difficulty in his life. And yet, we call David the man after God's own heart. That great psalmist of Israel that sought the Lord and loved the Lord and trusted in God. So again, I ask you, what are you afraid of? What brings you fear? Everybody has something that they are afraid of. Back to Julie's illustration, when she was young it was that little ood, and that was entirely of her imagination. She had no obvious, obviously she had no reason to be afraid of the Ood because there was no such thing as an Ood. And you know, in a believer's life, when we allow fear to control us, when we allow ourselves to be afraid of circumstances or whatever it might be, when we let Satan get our eyes off of our God, and on to things that are going on in our life, the circumstances of our life, the trials and the troubles and the hardships. If he can get our eyes off of God, he can cause us to stumble. And what I want us all to understand from this psalm tonight this tells us that the Lord is my light and he's my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We have no reason to fear. One of the reasons that brought me to this verse and this passage was... All the fear that is around today 
in our day the fear of the the virus I heard a comment recently by someone that was talking about you know how much even believers had come to fear this virus staying home isolating um, just acting like the world really when we have nothing to be afraid of now I'm not saying we shouldn't be careful I'm not saying we shouldn't take due caution to try to stay healthy and and not be exposed and and not get this but folks we shouldn't let anything be controlling our lives other than the Word of God and God himself and not even a virus the psalmist says the Lord is my light and he's my salvation what is a light it helps us see in darkness uh, we use a flashlight to get around at night uh, we turn lights on so that we don't stumble and fall as we maneuver through the house or wherever we might be most of you know in uh, I used to be a security guard uh, in charge of security at Bob Jones University and worked night watch I was the night watch supervisor and every night watchman carried a flashlight why to look in places that weren't lit up to make sure that things were kept secure and that's what God is to us he is our light to show us the path to show us where we should go to to expose trouble and expose problems ahead and help us to keep our feet on solid uh, standing the Lord is our light and then he says and my salvation and of course we know that salvation only comes from God you know Christians more than anybody else in the world should know and understand and experience that peace of God in the midst of no matter what's going on whether it's financial turmoil or whether it's it's trouble whether it's sickness or whatever it might be we as believers need to have God's peace we should be able to say with the psalmist the Lord is my light he's my salvation whom shall I fear I have no reason to be afraid so again I ask what makes you afraid because if we let that control us we have gotten our eyes off of God and off of his light and off of his salvation he goes on to say the Lord is the strength of my life you feel weak you need strength God's Word that's where you get it God can give us strength God can give us safety only God can folks of whom shall I be afraid folks are you afraid today are you afraid of what might come your way are you afraid of sickness or financial problems or what are you afraid of if you know the Lord is your Savior if you're trusting him as your Savior you don't need to be afraid because God is your light God is your salvation and we just simply don't need to be afraid what does Paul say 
in Romans 8.31. He says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? There simply is no reason as a believer trusting God, knowing that God is our light, God is our salvation, God is our strength. That pretty much covers it, doesn't it? Our light and our salvation and our strength. That's who God is for us. And we don't need to be afraid. See, way too often, we as people act just like Julie acted when she was young. Afraid of an Ood. What was an ood? No, no, what an ood was. It was non existent. It was something that was of her imagination. And she got scared of it. Her sister, who created the ood, got scared of it. <laughs> and it kept them out of the bedroom. And so often our fears keep us from the blessings of God because we allow our lives to be controlled by that fear. We don't need to be because the Lord is our light and the Lord is our salvation and the Lord is our strength. Why then be afraid? You know, the world's afraid of many, many things. They're afraid of death. Rightfully so. If you don't have the Lord in your heart, if you're not living for the Lord and, and ready for His coming, you ought to be afraid of death. They're afraid of many other things. Many people are afraid of the dark. Uh, afraid of what might happen if they lost their job. Afraid of, you know, so many things. But as believers, folks, we have nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to fear. Because God is our light. He's our salvation. And he's our strength. He gives us what we need. I challenge you today. Trust God. Don't live your life in fear. Live your life trusting God. Just a few brief uh, requests here. Um, one of our church members has asked us to pray for her sister-in-law. Uh, she was having uh, some pretty severe health issues. She seems to be doing a little bit better. But uh, please pray for Ruth. And then uh, last week I asked you to be praying for Brother Landis, Director of MTT Ministries. He had surgery on Friday and I'm pleased to report that that surgery went well on his shoulder and he's home recovering at this point. But let's pray for the Landises. And then we have a missionary that's off of the field right now um, whose wife is having uh, some health issues and uh, I wish uh, I would ask you to be praying for that missionary um, and his family as they try to uh, determine what the problem is and how to fix the problem. So I'm sure you have other requests that, that you might think about. And so uh, let's take our request to the Lord. The good thing is we know that he knows our needs even before we ask them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing upon the word and upon each other in these times. Lord, we do thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you that we don't have to fear that we can trust you and that we can know that our life 
is completely secure in your hands. Lord, we thank you for the blessing and the peace that comes with that knowledge. And Lord, I pray for anyone here that's listening tonight or that might listen to this recording that is fearful of something in their lives right now. Afraid of what might happen, or the fear of the unknown, uh, fear of financial reverses or sickness or surgery. There may be someone listening to uh, my voice today that is getting is facing some serious surgery, perhaps as soon as uh, more surgeries are, are begun in the opening up after COVID. Lord, I pray that you would give them peace to trust you, to know that you have their safety and their well-being in mind. Lord, we thank you for the Landis' uh, surgery, that it went well. We thank you that he's recovering well. We pray, Lord, that you give him strength, help him through the rehab and, and uh, the preparation to go on the uh, Western mission team that's to leave out in June. We pray your blessing upon them. We do pray for this other missionary that is off the field now uh, due to health issues uh, with his wife. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen uh, his wife, that you would give them wisdom, Lord, that they would be able to get some answers to what is going on and be able to address those issues and that you would bring her back to health. We pray for that entire family. We ask your blessing upon them as they seek your will and seek to serve you. Lord, we pray for all of our missionaries that uh, are uh, some on the field, some are home, uh, some are stuck in other places and some are stuck home because of uh, all of the closing down from COVID. I pray, Lord, that you would use them greatly wherever they find themselves. Lord, whether it be stateside, whether it be on the field, whether it be off the field but somewhere else, Lord, we ask your blessing. We ask for safety. We ask for peace and strength. And Lord, help them to have the power of the Spirit in their ministries wherever they are. Lord, give them wisdom to use their time to minister wherever and however they can. Lord, we know sometimes ministry seems limited, but we know that you're in control of all of this. And so, Lord, we, we ask uh, that you would be with each one of them. We thank you for their faithfulness. Ask that you would meet their financial needs. And, Lord, I pray for uh, Christians across America and around the world. Lord, may we seize upon the opportunity when the world is, is in turmoil and afraid Lord may the world see in our hearts a peace that in that definitely passes all understanding may they see a peace that rests in God alone we thank you Lord for the promise of your word tonight you indeed are our light and our salvation and you are our strength and we thank you for that. Lord, may we rest in that and trust you. And may we follow you. Lord, help none of us as believers to be controlled by fear, but to yield to you and to love you and to be used of you to show this lost and dying world how they can have that peace that passeth all understanding. Lord, we ask your blessing upon our uh, government officials. We pray for President Trump, his administration, and others that are in, in decision-making positions. Lord, we pray that they would you would turn their minds to you, that they would trust you, that they would come to know you if they don't as their Savior. And Lord, we ask for the soon return of Jesus Christ to come soon. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. 
And until that time, Lord, may we be found faithful, serving, trusting, and testifying of your goodness to us, to a lost and dying world around us. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope you've been blessed by this challenge. And I hope you'll have a great week. God bless you. We'll see you at another time in another place. <laughs> Thank you again for being with us here on the Gethsemane Baptist Church Midweek Live Service on Facebook. God bless. Praying for you all. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.